And next, we're going to hear from another friend of mine, uh, Garland Nixon. Garland Nixon is a longtime radio broadcaster. Uh, Garland Nixon has also, uh, he's been to Venezuela in student solidarity with the people of Venezuela against U.S. sanctions and attacks. Uh, you can hear him on Pacifica Radio. You can hear him on Sputnik as well. Uh, always great to listen to his program. I'm really honored for all the times I've been able to join you on the Critical Hour. Garland Nixon. Thank you. chant or something. I feel so left out. But at any rate, at any rate, first of all, let me say this. I, will fir I first want to say a word to the national security state people who are monitoring this conference. I mean, we can't leave them out. No, we can't overlook these people. They're important. They're important part of the movement. And I want to thank them. I want to thank them, oddly enough, for raiding the Uhuru movement. Why? Because I never heard of them before. I didn't know who they were. Who were them. That didn't mean anything to me. And then a few weeks ago, some friends of mine, you may have heard of the Black, uh, Black Alliance for Peace, Jean Mubarak, they contact me, hey, here's what happened. And I'm like, well, I got to get them on <laughs> immediately. And I was able to get Chairman O'Malley on my radio show in Los Angeles on KPFK uh, with Dr. Horn, Dr. Rick Horn, and everyone heard him, and I got great feedback. And once again, just like the Russia sanctions, it boomeranged. They threw it out there, and it came back, wow, bam, right in the forehead. And so uh, I, I think what we're looking at here is a situation where you look at what's happening, and you're like, well, they're over there, they're arguing with the Iranians, and they're, you know, the Chinese, and the Russians, and everywhere. It's like a person who falls in the water and they can't swim, a dying man in the water, and he's reaching for anything he can to grab on to save himself because he knows that the situation is dire. I was in the Verizon store the other day, just before I left, and I walked in, just a person who was in, you know, not politically uh, motivated by any stretch of the imagination, and we started talking, and what she voiced to me was a, 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 an understanding and a knowledge that this system has fallen apart, that the leadership of this country isn't, I mean, it sounded like me talking, and this was not a radio talk show host, this was just your average person. So the problem they have is that people are waking up. People are becoming aware. We didn't do that. I didn't do that. You didn't do that. It's obvious. The system is coming apart at the seams, as it naturally would. When you come up with a system that only takes care of a tiny group of elite ruling class people at the top and actually extracts the wealth, it doesn't disregard the others. It extracts the wealth of the others at the expense of the people at the bottom. And what's happening as the empire unravels, you see, the empire would go to Africa and do it. And they, and they would get the, the, the gold and whatever they needed. They'd go to South America, you know, and as that grew tougher now, they turn inward. And now there's student loans. And now a student gets out of college at 23 and they have a house payment and no house. And now the, they're extracting from the inside. They're extracting from everyone and the people inside the empire who actually expected to benefit from empire. They expected, well, I'm on the inside. You know, okay, they're out there doing whatever. I'll just turn my, turn my head away. I don't see that. And I get, and, I, and, and I'm not going to ask why I live in Maryland and I can buy um, apples that are grown an hour away in Westminster or Orchards for 89 cents a pound, for, for uh, excuse me, for $1.99 a pound. But I can get bananas that are grown 3,000 miles away for 39 cents a pound because the empire is taking advantage of the people who grow the bananas. And they maybe have to pay the people here in America who grow them, they got to pay them a little bit more. I'm not going to ask that because I'm benefiting from cheap bananas. And that's what happens inside of the empire. The people expect to uh, be able to benefit from empire, so they just keep their blinders on and they pretend that they don't see anything, and they can't anymore, because now they are being consumed by the empire that went out to the indigenous people around the world and even here and took advantage of them for their cheap labor, whatever. Then they made the error, oh boy, there's lots of cheap labor in China, we'll just go get that. 
because the Chinese people are inferior to us and certainly they won't be productive enough to turn their opportunity into advancement, but they did. And now they don't know how to deal with that. And so here we sit in a situation where they're angry, they're raiding, oh, they're at everybody. We're going to have to chime, we're going to have to pressure. Oh, the world movement, well, they're saying that we're screwing up, let's grab them. They're grabbing in every direction, but it's not going to do them any good because the person in the Verizon store who knows nothing about politics can see it. When the situation is right, 
your movement, if you're doing the right thing, will start to take hold. And I think that's what this is about. This is about people who, are, who have been for years saying, this system is unfair. This system only takes care of a few. This system con is concentrating power. And people wouldn't listen to that. Why? Because they can get bananas for 39 cents a pound. Who cares? I get bananas for 39 cents a pound. I, and so the argument in the so-called left here in America was what? The argument was who gets a bigger slice of the pie? You know, that was the argument in the left here. Hey, do I get a big slice? You got a big well, These people, right? And unions, it was who gets a slice of the pie? Everybody talked about it's not fair. If we could just get this pie divvied up equally, then everything would work right. But we never had a discussion about all the brown and black bodies that were baked into that pie. That's imperialism. And now, we don't have to have that discussion. Let's be honest about this issue and what's going on in Ukraine. Let's be honest about it. Not a single country in Africa has agreed and is going along with the United States. Outside of the countries that are vassals in Asia, that ain't happening either. How about South America? How about the Caribbean? How about the Middle East? The United States has the nerve to go to Indonesia, Vietnam, Cambodia, all countries that have had genocides at the hands of the United States and say, oh yeah, can you uh, join with us against, against uh, China? <laughs> yes, sir, we we got to stop these Chinese. <laughs> but when we look at it, what happens? We see that now that the colonial powers that for centuries have abused the rest of the world and have claimed that they were economically, they were socially, they were morally superior to the rest of the world and that's why they were doing so well. Now the reality is coming out because there are other options. Now the United States goes to Africa and says, don't do business with the Chinese. And the Africans are like, hey man, it's working out for us. Sorry, we can't help. Now when I go to Venezuela and I go way out into the mountains in a little town and I see this sign, socialist village, Right, and it's like this big, it was like an apartment complex the size of a small town. And what was it? It was the government building homes for the poor. Yep, it's yours. And I go in there and I'm, I'm you know, talking to the people and there's these little women, this tall, <laughs> little women. And they come up to me and the vest we had on, you know, had what country we were from and it had a, 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 um, a, a, a American flag on it. And they looked at me and they said, you go back and you tell the Americans, we will fight for our democracy. Yeah. Right? And I say to myself, you're not defeating that because it's in the hearts of the people. And why is it? You put it in the hearts of the people. You oppress these people. They, know, they use the word neoliberalism. Oh, why? Because you went to their country. People are like, well, the pink tide, red tide, whatever is going on now. You know what they said to me? They said, well, you call it socialism, whatever. We've been living this way for 10,000 years. This is our way of life. We all look out for each other, right? That's the way they live. So when you go there and you see that these people suffered at the hands of colonialism and they're saying never again, <laughs> you know what I mean? You can do whatever you want, but we ain't going back to that. And the U.S. says, well, we will, we will uh, uh, sanction you, we will do this, only makes them matter. <laughs> to them even more the evilness
fullness of the system that they're against. They're saying, man, you guys are worse than we thought. We knew you were bad economically, but now you're just going to starve us right to death. Well, we know we got to stand up against that. And again, it boomerangs. The more they do to expose themselves, the more that the people of the world see it. And now we have a situation where the people of the world, and see, this is what's upsetting the neocons. You know, I can say the United States, I can use whatever I want, word I want. Neocolonialism, the empire, this stuff didn't just start yesterday. <laughs> you know, they've been doing this for hundred years. This is, you know, we can go with opium wars, we can go on and on and on, right? This system, they are exposing to people in their desperation just how bad it is and that makes people look at other options and opportunities and now the problem they have is that's happening russia and china are rising and and, and let me add this i think this is important and in trying to push russia and china away economically what they're doing is they're creating a dynamic when it's where it's in the best interest of the russians and the chinese to say well this is not a market where we can work with people and sell ourselves so it's in our best interest to help to build up africa build up the middle east build up to help to work with and build these uh, other parts of the world that were traditionally, traditionally held down so we can all do business and work together they are creating a dynamic of their own economic doom. And I'll say this, and I'm not here to say, I hate America, I hate Europe, I hate this, I hate that. I'm here to say this, I know the difference, and I know that there is a difference between the words and symbols we use to refer to something and that thing we're referring to. So when I say America, that's just a word. It's a word, what is America? It's a noun. But the question is, what is it referring to? When I say Europe, what is it referring to? So if I say, well, I love America, what am I referring to when I say America? I like to talk about the people, love the people. I can talk about, you see what I'm saying? So, so in reality, when it comes down to it, it's, yeah, they're like, well, you guys, you hate America. What do you mean when you say America? What are you referring to? It's just a noun. It doesn't mean anything. So ultimately, here's people saying, we love America. If you understand what we're talking about, we're, we're not talking about a small group of wealthy people. We're talking about a group, we're talking about we love and we're, and what we want is a place where my father and anybody else's father with a third grade education can join a union that will give him fair representation so that when company X or whoever makes whatever this money is out there, that the workers are fairly compensated. That's, that's just, you we're some evil beings if we just want people to be fairly compensated? That if people, regardless of their color or their race or whatever, are able to go out and to express what they want to express and whether we agree with it or not. You don't have to, look, first of all, you don't have to have any kind of special laws to protect someone that stands on the street and says, yay, I'm for the Republican or Democratic Party. You need laws to protect someone who says unpopular speech. And that's what we're for. That's what we believe in. So I just say to everyone today, um, I don't have a, 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 a lot more, but I say to everyone, it is important to um, understand history. And again, when I went out to Venezuela, I'll tell you, let me say this, I'll tell you something that shocked me, I was about to say it, but I'll say this. Also, I learned so much. I'll go out to these little villages, right? And I saw something that I'm not accustomed to. Because one of the things they do here in an attempt to keep poor people down, to keep always to keep black people down, to keep people down is they don't educate you. They do everything they can to keep you from getting a decent education, keep you ignorant, then you don't know. But I went out to these little villages and I talked to these people. Their knowledge of history and politics was incredible. They're, and I'm like, wow, you guys really, whoa, you know, and they're going back to Simon Bolivar and such, and they're going on. I'm like, this is incredible. And they said, yeah, that was part of the Chavez movement, was educating people, was giving them history, right? And, 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 and giving them knowledge to empower them. Because you know what? Because no matter what, if you have knowledge, and an 
understanding of history, you can move forward. You're powerful. You can always build a movement with knowledge, keeping people ignorant and then just feeding them whatever you want to feed them. Forget history. This just happened. Why the Ukraine thing just started on February 24th. Nothing before that. You don't want to look backwards. And I understood the power in knowledge and the power in um, empowering people through, through um, knowledge, through um, waking up to the reality around them. And I just feel like that uh, this group and this organization is about that. And I really appreciate what you're doing. And I really appreciate the fact that um, you took the time out to invite me here. Mr. Tom, radio guy. <laughs> I thank the national security state because what they're doing in the same way, let me say this, in the same way that the millionaires and billionaires, as they grab the money up, you know, during COVID, they took all of this money. Oh, well, man, we got it all. But that woke a lot of people up, yeah. Yeah. right? That the things that they're doing to grab money and to hold people down and all that, they're smiling. Yeah, we're getting away with everything. In the short term, you are. You're getting it. But in the long term, you're working, waking people up. And the national security state in oppressing people who are trying to express their constitutional rights. In, in going after the Huru movement, who are exercising their constitutional rights. That's a whole other discussion. <laughs> because I've always said, as Malcolm X, I don't believe that black people are, 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 are citizens in this country. <laughs> the whole believe we're citizens. That's a long discussion. But the bottom line is, what they're doing in their ham-handed way, they're doing more work to wake people up than we could ever hope for. Yeah. And I want to thank everyone.